Patrick, who served as a minister for various portfolio trade, uh, regional integration, and NEPAD, all under the Kufo administration. He ran in the elections of 2007, the primaries. Uh, he did not do it. He did not, he did not succeed. Now he wants to run again. Why? Doc, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you very much. Where have you been? Well, I thought perhaps you knew that I had taken a position with the ECOWAS Commission. Oh, for you're, the last you're still there? Four and a half years. Okay. And I uh, was the Commissioner for Macroeconomic Policy and Economic Research for the 15 member countries. And that's what I've been doing over the last few years. I just completed my assignment. And obviously, anxious to join the political race here. So came back home and I started the process. I visited so many constituencies and regions. And that's what I've been doing. Mm. The former president, Kufo, gave you a job to be in charge of integrating uh, uh, Africa uh, under the new partnership. West Africa. For, yeah, under the new okay. partnership for Africa development, NEPAD. Yes. Now you're also talking about this commission of yours. Since I've been a child, or since I was a child, I've been seeing a huge billboard that said there was going to be a currency called the Echo. Should we blame you for the reason we still don't have the Echo? Well, I think it may not be appropriate to blame me. The issue is bigger than myself and goes beyond me. Obviously, this has been going on for 30 or 40 years since this process started. I've been party to this during the short period that I was Minister for Regional Cooperation in NEPAD and therefore in charge of uh, ECOWAS. And then obviously I went again to, for the second time, this time as a commissioner. It is a very difficult process. You know, you know, structurally, we have 15 member countries. Each has its own economic uh, situation, challenges, opportunities, and uh, different management techniques and, and expertise are available in this in these countries. My job was to coordinate policies and to give coherence, to provide guidelines and to monitor member countries how they perform. In other words, every year during the first uh, semester of the year, we send our professionals from ECOWAS to go into individual member countries, assess how they are performing. If there are areas that we think they are not performing well, we draw their attention to, we work with them to ensure that they have the appropriate policies and the reporting mechanisms that allow us to monitor. So we've been up and down. There are times we miss so much progress. But we have set what we call the convergence criteria. Mm. Criteria: Member countries must meet certain macroeconomic policy conditions, such as uh, debt GDP ratio, inflation rate, uh, GDP growth rate, and many others that will allow the countries to have basically common development agenda and all can be in equal credible development patterns so that when we form a, a union, monetary union, it will not be just bringing weak countries and weak economies together and not getting the benefits of the integration. Mm. And therefore, it's taking us a while. 2020 was our deadline to the last deadline that um, we were supposed to have started the new currency. Unfortunately, we could not get enough critical mass, enough countries that are met the criteria to form a credible uh, group or credible currency. So we postpone it to 2026. And we are, they are, I'm no longer there, but I, I know that they're working very hard, the presidents and the minister of finance and the governors that are involved with us in this process have given their commitment, and we're hoping that over time. This year, the last few years, everybody is blaming, blaming COVID. And, but the impact on the COVID on the member countries is a cumulative impact on ECOWAS. And so we all suffered significant losses because of the COVID. We have, we have started the march again with significant improvement in economic performance of many of the countries. And hopefully, 
we will get there. Okay. Do Doc, considering your background as former minister for trade, I believe that that would be an, an area you'll be considering because this government had said we're going to move from taxation to production. They talked about 1D, 1F, a number of things in the trade sector. We always complain about why we have to go to Burkina Faso to import uh, tomatoes when we have Polugu, which was left for us by Kwame Nkrumah. Even your own village of Akumadan is something that you have in abundance. Is it mm -hmm. a policy problem or it is, I, I don't know. What do you think is the problem with our, with our food well, security? It's lack of adequate commitment. Policies are just on paper. Human beings make them real and make them work. You can have all the ideas you want in the world. The most important ones is the implementation. And therefore, you realize here in Ghana, and I'm not particularly citing this government, we have not been very effective in implementing policies that we have outlined because the measures to ensure that they are, they are undertaken are usually not followed and the processes are not examined so critically and over a specific period. So we have good programs on paper. We start, we get excited, but over time, we don't carry it through. And that is the problem. There are so many good ideas that we have embarked on in this country. But now, where we stand, we have to go back and look at the processes what mechanisms we put in place to ensure that we accomplish, and what mechanisms are put in place for correction. They should be spelled out, they should be underlined, they should have the time frames, they should have the organization or agencies that are in charge of monitoring to ensure that actually results are delivered. I think not Ghana alone. When you have not been able to achieve your target, you cannot complain. You can't make a case except to admit that we have not. All of us were excited about this one district, one factory concept. It's an excellent con con uh, concept. I supported it. I was the campaign manager at the time, and I contributed to sharing ideas on it. And I thought it had it could significantly impact. Because why? Look at our country. Every region has resources that are plentiful in supply. We have enough technicians in our system that we went out there and targeted specific regions with specific projects that are available in terms of the resources within that particular place. Then all that is left is one implementation, two monitoring, evaluation, and actualizing the projects. So this is the area that I think perhaps we need to do more than we have done because the concepts are there. In many instances, even the resources are there. So it, what is the missing link? The missing ingredient is lack of ability to supervise and get the resource and make sure that the resources that are located are used effectively for the project. Yeah. And, and in many instances, we find that this is not the case. Okay, let's conclude now. The last time you tried to be NPP flag bearer, you pulled 19 votes, and I mean 1-9, when others were pulling over 1,000 votes. Why do you think the NPP delegates would give you any better votes now? There's time for everything. You may also wish to recall that the first time that I went, I was number three. I did far better than I did now in the last instance. Well, there are many reasons for that that I don't need to think per perhaps this is the case. But I would agree that things are, times are different. And I've been around the country. As I indicated earlier, I've been in 14 out of the 16 regions in our country today. And I'm confident that my old experience is not what is prevailing. Tremendous improvement. Well, I've had a lot of experience over that period, and I think I'm better positioned than ever before to, one, lead this country, and, and to begin with, to win this uh, election and to lead this country. Even though you're coming against strong names, one of them was on the ballot with you. He has always been considered the de facto number two when he went against 
Nana Akufuado in the past. I'm referring to Alan Chemantin. Now, we do know that the vice president has an interest. Other members who are in active politics now or who have been in government in recent times are planning to do so, including the Minister for Agriculture, former Dr. Efri Akoto. All of these people, you think you stand a chance against them, considering that they I had chance... very, they... very tall among them. My experience is overwhelming. Practical experience in managing economies, practical experience in dealing with the current problems, my experience, my knowledge of this party from its formative period, what we stand for, where we are going, I believe I stand better, I have a better chance than anybody in this race to win this. And the proof of the pudding is in the evening, isn't it? Yes, we indeed. We, we wish you all the best and we look forward to the, the contest. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Doc. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. That's Dr. Ko, that's Dr. Kofi Konedo Apreku. He's former member of parliament for Ofenso North. He served in the Kofor government in various portfolios, including Minister of Trade, Minister for Regional Integration, and NEPAD. He contested in 2007. He was part of the 17 NPP presidential hopeful or flag bearer hopefuls. He, like I said, they pulled 19, but he says he's very hopeful now that he will do better and beat all the others to the, to the flag bearership.